I got elected to the legislature, uh, Senator, when I was 26 years old, and I served 16 years there. And Governing Magazine was, uh, in many ways, the guiding star of reform, efficiency, effectiveness, and the best ideas and practicing uh, in government. So I really thank you, and I am I'm really thrilled uh, to receive this honor from this particular magazine and this organization of great thinkers in America. And I, I am also, even though I am not typically known as being a very humble person, <laughs> really, really awe-inspired by the other awardees tonight uh, because just by virtue of your commitment to the country and to the world, uh, I think it gives us a sense of, of great hope. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of this leadership team that's been recognized. Now, the city of New Orleans has always been a magical place for the world. It's one of the world's great cities, always has been. Uh, I was talking to Alan a little bit earlier, Detroit's gonna be fine, it has great bones, uh, because cities are the places where a lot, a lot of people live now. Um, and migratory patterns change over time. Back in the 50s and 60s, folks were moving out of the cities into the suburbs, connecting rural America to the suburbs and to the cities. Now a lot of people are moving back into the cities and challenges come with atrophy and challenges come with growth. And cities and uh, areas all in between, between the city hall and the state house, all have to figure out how to make that work. And so I was thrilled to hear about the Senate President's work in bringing people together. Because at the end of the day, for America, it's about getting things done. And if you served in the legislature or you served in the mayor's office or an executive office, you really do not have the time, uh, and I don't have the patience, to have a philosophical argument about how to get things done. You need to make things happen, because that's what we are called upon to do. And so as I listen to everybody speak tonight, my mind immediately went to the presidential race and to the discussions that we're hearing on the, on the federal level about who's gonna do what, when, where, and how. Mo and the answer to that is mostly nobody and no, they're not gonna get anything done. And as you think about what it is that they're doing and the fact that in Washington, D.C., they have found a place to get to gridlock, really the challenge falls to all of us in local government and state government actually to deliver things to people, what they deserve, what they need, and in, and in many ways, what they demand. And if you listen to the national discourse and the cynicism and the lack of hope and the lack of, uh, of vision going forward, you could become cynical if you allowed that to be the thing that ruled the day. But in here tonight, I hope all of you have heard something that I have heard, which is that America works, uh, that we are gonna find a way uh, to get it done or we're gonna make one. Uh, and that when things get dark, when things get dim, when you look at the people in this room and you think about the work that each and every one of you have done, you know that in America anything is possible because you've made it so. And the reason is, is because we believe in teamwork. We believe in listening to people on the ground. There is no disconnect between what citizens need and what we hear and then our ability to deliver because we all have to do it together. And of course, there is no better example than that than the people of the city of New Orleans who were decimated totally destroyed by Katrina, Rita, Ike, Gustav, those are all hurricanes. <laughs> the National Recession and the BP oil spill all happened to us in 10 years while the nation was in two wars and while we were in deficit. And we, the people of New Orleans, found a way with your help, and I thank you on behalf of them, the American public, um, to stand ourselves back up and to do something magical, which was not to put the city back the way it was, because we were not great before the storm to really take a minute and to look at ourselves honestly and ascertain that it took 40 or 50 years for us to get into a place where a hurricane could beat us down so badly and that we would just be decimated. And we have begun to build the city back, not the way it was, and as you heard my daddy say, he stole my line, the way that we always dreamed she should be. And that took a lot of courage. And that took us overcoming fear. And it took us into a place of creating something new and not listening to the old way and actually thinking of the, the, the really beauty that America brings to us and our ability to recreate ourselves time and time and time again. And at the end of the day, everybody knows the essential truth that it's really not complicated, it's just really hard. And we, we in this room have been called upon 
to do the hard work of governing. And I think everybody in this room knows it's possible or else you wouldn't be here making the commitment. So I would just say to you, um, as we close the night, um, and we're thankful to each other and we're thankful for our fellowship, I would tell you to be hopeful uh, because optimism always overcomes cynicism. I would tell you to be brave because courage always overcomes fear. And I would tell you to be free uh, because when you're free, you can do the right thing for the right reason and you can deliver to the people what it is that they deserve. So God bless you all and thank you very much.